Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Thursday morning, market down ever so slightly, so 1.4 percent till still in that 2.6 trillion dollar mark. Again, nowhere near the three trillion that we were under the 2.7 2.7 trillion that we were not too long ago. Uh, but look above the 2.5 trillion where we were before. But again, overall down around about 1.4 percent. Bitcoin dominance continues to fall, so it's under 42 percent now, and looking like it's getting ready to go under 40 percent. A little bit of volume there, so again, people are buying the dips, but the market's still kind of all over the place a little bit. Gas prices have risen considerably. These were about seven dollars yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so they've basically doubled overnight. So uh, not great for anyone trying to use the Ethereum network. But look, if you've been in Ethereum for a while, you're somewhat accustomed to high gas fees because they haven't been cheap in a really long time. All right, so again, looks like a bit of red, and again, that's to be expected. Overall, the market is down, but what's bucked the trend? What's doing really well? Metaverse. <laughs> Sand, Gala, Mana, Engine right up there, Wax, Chilies. I mean, Chilies isn't Metaverse, and neither is Wax really, but, you know, gaming, NFTs, and all that, still doing extremely well. I mean, Sand up nearly 40% just in the last 24 hours, Gala 30%. Mana nearly 20%, Engine 16.4%, Wax nearly 14%, Chili's up nearly 10%. So that whole space is still on fire at the moment. What we need to remember is that this doesn't last forever. Now, I don't know when it's going to stall out, but I get the feeling like this metaverse thing is going to play out much the same as the DeFi summer that we had last year. I mean, DeFi is almost dead at the moment. Other than Curve, uh, that's getting a bit of a bounce there, which is really nice. But, you know, a lot of the DeFi projects, they're just, they're very quiet at the moment. No one's really talking about it. Like I said, Aave down at the lowest level it's been seen against Ethereum in a really long time. You know, other big projects, again, other than Curve, really, what else is DeFi here? Well, Rune, Thorchain, uh, we've got a few kind of uh, small gains from those, but these are the uh, few that have made a couple of gains. Again, the DeFi sector has been really quiet. You know, we had the L1s that fired up. Now they're, you know, they're still doing all right, but they're nowhere near as big as they were before. Now we've moved into gaming sort of NFT space. That's going to go quiet, and I have no doubt we're going to move back to DeFi at some stage but we've got to wait for this to run out and the gains have been quite outstanding. And that may just be the new cycle that we don't have true bear markets. Again, wait and see. None of this is ever financial advice. It's just simply we're cycling from one thing to the next. Uh, but, you know, we'll wait and see. But look, some nice double digit gains for a number of projects there. and Zcash again, doing extremely well with the talk of them well, not the talk, the report, that they are moving from proof of work to proof of stake. But what hasn't fared well considering the market's down? There we go. Amp, which was pumping the other day. Audius, same with Cadena. Terra Luna down a little bit. Sol, Lubring. Again, a lot of these coins were pumping the other day, except for SHIB. That just continues to go way down. There is really quite a sell-off there. But Again, to be expected, something pumps so hard that eventually people are going to take profits. And, yeah, it's just the way it goes. You know, SHIB and Doge have been very quiet for a while now. And, again, it was that whole meme coin sort of mania as well. And as you can see, it is literally running through phases. You know, SHIB, Doge, Floki, Inu, and, you know, all these other meme coins were running hot for a while. And again, DeFi was running hot last year. L1's running hot earlier this year. Now they've slowed right down. And the metaverse, metaverse uh, gaming NFT space is what is running hot at the moment. I get the feeling like that will be the cycles. But, you know, you can try and chase the pumps and try and chase the trends. I like to find what isn't pumping and is dead and is quiet and no one's talking about and start to load up on those. That is my... Uh, my plan and so again DeFi at the moment hardly anyone's talking about it so DeFi is where i'm starting to stack up because i kind of missed you know a lot of the nft stuff i did get some like i've got a position in engine uh and i got a position in chilies and they're doing all right but yeah i, I missed sand i was going to buy sand and you know 
just didn't even really consider wax and so again i've missed that i'm not going to go chasing it i am looking for the things that generally are underperforming at the moment and no one's talking about and that really is DeFi. i think DeFi will be the next to get another pump i just don't know exactly when it's going to come but DeFi is where i'll be putting my money and then again once that starts to pump up you know start to take some profits and then again find you know the thing that is dead quiet and that you know could revert all the way back to l1s again we'll have to wait and see or bitcoin or ethereum or something like that but you know a couple of double digit losses and then just lots of sort of single digit losses so nothing major and again that's to be expected considering the market's only down 1.4 percent but yeah some couple coins you know that metaverse kind of stuff doing really well and everything else down just a little bit but really just kind of traveling sideways you know the entire market cap Got to keep an eye and see where I go. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. What is it telling us? All right, Bitcoin still volatile, but continues to set in lower highs at the moment. So that was the high, that was the high, that was the high. We thought we were going to get a breakout, wasn't. That was the high, and now it looks like it's already starting to come down. So as I said, I am expecting it to you know, come down maybe right through Friday until Saturday. Once all the options and everything are done, I just get the feeling like that's probably going to be when the market will start to move up. But yeah, no guarantees in life. We'll have to wait and see. But what is interesting, again, is this long-term channel that we've been following. We keep just playing with the bottom end of this channel. Sometimes we dip out and then most of the time we're sort of back in. And again, if we really sort of scale out, this is the channel that I'm talking about. We've been in this channel for a really, really long time. Since the, you know, the crash of everything back, back in March 20, to the upside, to the downside, we broke out way to the top for a while there, and we've just dipped out to the bottom side of it another, a few times. So we're just waiting to see. And interesting, look where the $88,000 mark is, right in the middle. Now, yeah, I just, uh, I'm finding it really hard to see Bitcoin and everything just going crazy next month and you know it's getting these blow off tops not saying it can't be done but I mean yeah it's just it's got to really get a sort of wriggle on as they say because not a whole lot is going on at the moment but look the longer we just kind of play around with the bottom of uh, this channel we're still going up and so I don't I literally wouldn't mind if it you know we just kept playing with the bottom of this channel again till like March or June, something next year. You know, let's go June here. And then we have this kind of blow off top. Because I mean, look where we are in sort of June if we're at the bottom. It's 135,000 in June for Bitcoin if it just keeps playing around with this with no real blow off top. And then from there, we get a blow off top. It starts to get into that two, three hundred thousand dollar level. So for me, I don't mind if that happens, and that'll be something I'm looking for. But at the moment, again, I think Bitcoin's still going to come down this week. How low it'll go, I don't know. You know, again, maybe that kind of fifty-three thousand dollar level. We'll wait and see. Now, a couple of stories. So Wax, I was just talking about them before. I missed out on it. They have built the largest cross-blockchain e ecosystem of NFTs, gaming, and GameFi with Binance. So now you can cross uh, between the two. Now, it's not all tokens. It's just a few tokens at the moment. And I think the ones they were talking about was the blockchain brawlers. So that's uh, these down here. But they are looking to move to other chains in the future. And again, multi, you know, cross-chain diversity, interoperability, all that kind of stuff. That really is the future. But it's good to see that Binance is still getting some stuff done because they were really quiet. They had a lot a few rug pulls in their DeFi space uh, and a couple of hacks in their DeFi space as well. Notice it wasn't the Binance Smart Chain itself. It was the protocols that were built on the Binance Smart Chain because Binance Smart Chain is pretty much a fork of Ethereum, uh, just, you know, more scalable and things like that. But they definitely had some issues, you know, along with the regulatory issues they've been uh, having for quite some time as well and there was something i read the other day that maybe binance are about to set up their headquarters over in ireland so very, very interesting that you know out of all the places in the world they could go they may be setting up a headquarters in ireland not that there's anything wrong with the irish or ireland of irish heritage so all good there but just yeah it's not exactly a financial hub 
or, or anything like that. So, yeah, I guess we'll find out sooner rather than later, if they do it, why they chose Ireland. All right, a million ETH have been burnt since EIP 1559 came out in August. So that is a million, and look, that's just starting to grow. Now, what was interesting is this little chart down here showing what's getting the most. OpenSea and NFTs is still by far kind of the behemoth uh, and burning up most of the ETH. So NFTs are still really huge. Uniswap, we can still, still has a lot of uh, volume in there. So even with the high fees, people are still using it, although not as much. And it would be great, I think, if Uniswap did move over to Polygon, as we looked at that story the other day. MetaMask up there, Axie Infinity also up there, One Inch and Sushi Swaps. So very, very interesting that, you know, Uniswap particularly is still being used. It's Again, it, it's whales. No one else can afford to, you know, use Uniswap at the moment. I mean, it's a couple of hundred dollars a transaction there. Uh, at bare minimum and you know depending on when you do it sometimes it can be a whole lot more than a couple of hundred it can be super expensive all right cardano now this is interesting it's gone to a three month low in price what have i been speaking about you want to be buying things when everyone else has basically gone quiet on it and given up on it and i'm not saying cardano is there at the moment but it's very, very interesting. They pumped really, really hard again. I was picking Cardano up for somewhere between three cents and eight cents. Now I bought Cardano since, but now it's started to go really, really quiet again. This is, yeah, I'm thinking about buying Cardano. I'm gonna to have to go back to the charts and have a look. Now, a lot of this has had to do with eToro uh, saying that you know they're going to delist it, but it's just for the US users. It's not for everyone. So if you're an eToro, and not listed and not from the US, you can still buy it. But the US customers, excuse me, as of December won't be able to buy it. And eToro have cited, you know, regulatory issues, but, you know, the SEC has not come out and said, you know, that they're coming after Cardano and Cardano's been listed over in Japan on the exchanges there and they have quite stringent rules. Uh, Card Cardano's or ADA, whichever one you want to call it, is one of the few coins that can actually be sold over there. So very, very interesting. But look, eToro are also going to delist Tron. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Do eToro have some inside information that we don't know that, you know, next will be Cardano or Tron maybe that the SEC is going after. Time will tell. All right, last but not least. Banking giant Citigroup are going to hire 100 employees for new crypto division. So again, this is where it's all going. We're still not there. You gotta understand you really are still early. Does that mean we can't have a, you know, 80% bear market in the next, you know, tomorrow? No, absolutely, it still could happen and look, may happen, but that doesn't mean that this space isn't getting ready to explode. It just doesn't happen overnight. It literally doesn't go, all right, this is it. Tomorrow's the day we explode and it all just kind of rockets off. That mass adoption, that will take time. But look, it will come definitely within sort of the next, well, I can't say definitely because this is only my personal opinion, but I think within the next 10 years, you know, Stable coins are basically the thing. Cryptocurrencies, you know, such as again, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, maybe Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, we'll have to wait and see how well they do. But, you know, they've been already adopted by PayPal, you know, MasterCard and things like that are already using Ethereum and Stellar Network, the USD, USDC, sorry, on those networks. So this whole digital money, that really is the future and cryptocurrencies will play a part of it. Now, Litecoin hasn't fared too well. Bitcoin Cash certainly hasn't fared too well, but PayPal offer them. And once PayPal start to offer them to the rest of the world, maybe that will be the kick uh, in the pants that they kind of need to, you know, fire up. But look, you know, I don't own any Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin has just been one of those coins that's really underperformed for me. Uh, and I've only really kept it out of sentimental value because I did sell a little bit and basically got all my money back. So now with the Litecoin that I have, I can, you know, just kind of let ride. And when I say all my money back, I didn't put that much money into Litecoin in the first place. And I am glad that I really put uh, a majority of my holdings into Bitcoin and Ethereum. But with Ethereum, you know, ETH 2.0 just cannot come quick enough. It is 
Yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> I don't want to harp on that because we've spoke about that plenty of times. All right, that's going to be it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on the game train at the moment because we're down unless you're really in the metaverse uh, gaming NFT space, then you're doing quite well. And I'll see you next time.